So, but the problem is not just guilt. Like you say, that can be taken care of uh, with a tub full of water and prayer and the mercy and grace of God. The brokenness within takes a little longer. The healing, the sinfulness, the uncleanness within, getting ourselves cleaned up on the inside, that's not the work of a moment. That's the work of a lifetime. So how do we do that? Three things. I never hear a surprise for the people at home here. Um, first is that we have to desire to be cleansed within more than anything in the world. We need that desperate determination, that great desire to be cleaned up on the inside. And look, let's be honest. Most of us don't have that. We're not born with that. We are f afraid of lots of things. Uh, we are afraid of getting cancer. We're afraid of getting a disease. We're afraid of, I don't know, the stock market crashing and the price of gas going up. Or we're afraid of bad things happening to our children. We're afraid of lots of things. All of these things are the things that we dread. But the thought of being sinful and being left in our sinful state is generally not high on our worry list. You know, we are, if, we're, if, if we're really honest with ourselves, in our fallen secular state, we are more afraid of physical cancer than we are of spiritual sin. So and if they have to say, you're going to be left in this, your spiritual sinful state, in our secret heart of hearts, we say, you know what, that's okay. You know, as long as I don't get cancer, as long as a uh, disaster doesn't strike my body and my family and my stock portfolio or my whatever you got, like we have stock portfolios. But anyway, as long as these things do not strike us, um, then we're okay. So we need to have a change of mind. Metanoia in the Greek, usually translated repentance. We need to say, it's really dumb to be w more worried about cancer than it is about sin. Because eventually you're going to die, whether it's with cancer, old age, uh, whatever. Uh, you are going to die, that's okay, the Lord can take care of that with the, the resurrection. But sin is something else. If we don't offer it to God, then we're toast. We remain with this forever. And this will destroy us and keep us from God and stop us from authentic human living and keep us from joy. The thing that we should be afraid more than anything else is sin. And we can't, we can do all that we can, we can read all of those idiot self-help books, I mean, yeah, that sort of stuff, pop psychology and all of this stuff, you know, I'm okay, you're okay, which, which should be subtexted, none of us are actually okay, but whatever, you've got all of these wonderful self-help books, it cannot save us. There was an old uh, Christian, uh, Christian rock performer, the, the, the great granddaddy of all Christian rock performers, Larry Norman. A little quick, quick quiz. Who has heard of Larry Norman? Likes them. Good, glory to God. I'm, I'm, I'm astonished. I thought I was going to be the only dinosaur in the room. Okay. So you'll recall from his, I think it was his first album, Upon This Rock, I'm that old, um, there was a song book called Nothing Ever Changes. And he said, nothing ever changes, everything remains the same. Unless Jesus Christ sets you free, Nothing ever changes. You are what you are till the day that you die. So the question is, is that good enough? Do we want to remain broken on the inside and remain how we are until the day that we die? If we, if we have metanoia, if we have a change of mind, we could say that would be the ultimate catastrophe in my life for God to leave me. If we need, the first thing we need to do in order to experience healing is to acknowledge that we want Christ to save us, and he is our only help. If he does not heal us on the inside, there is no hope for us in this age or in the age to come. We need that desperate determination and desire to be healed. That's the first thing. Second thing is that we need to come to Jesus Christ in the privacy of our, of our heart, in the solitude of, of our own souls, and drop the mask. It was really hard for the woman when the Lord said, <clears throat> who touched me? She thought, oh, you can see her, the life passes before her eyes, and she figures, I am in such trouble. The last thing I want to do, you know, the, the world, the earth never swallows you up when you want it to, you know. The, I, the last thing that I want to do is come and admit to the prophet of Nazareth and all of these people who I've just made unclean and who will not be philosophical about this, what I have, what I have done, you know. Maybe if I just keep quiet He'll say, oh, I thought somebody touched me. to walk away. But then there's that. <laughs> Probably not. Then you're in real trouble. So she came and she spilled it, uh, spilled her guts, as it were, to the, to the Lord, as difficult as that was. And in the same way, if we are going to find healing, we need to admit to Jesus Christ that we are a tremendous mess. We need to let the religious mask fall. 
And that's really hard to do because sometimes we think that the only thing that keeps us together is the masks that we wear. And don't, don't get me wrong, it's okay to wear masks. You need them in certain contexts. If you're going out and someone says, you know, uh, how are you? Well, look, they, they don't want to know. You don't say, well, actually, my, actually my, my prayer life is the pits and I'm worried about my kids. They're not interested in knowing. It's a, it, is a, it is a social convention. All, the, all that they really mean is greetings and salutations. You know, I greet you. Peace be unto you. That sort of stuff. That's all that they're saying. Don't tell them. They don't want to know. So it's okay. You keep the mask on. I am a together individual and I'm a happy person. Okay. Nonsense. Of course. <laughs> That's what they want to hear. So the mask is okay. But you've got to know when to drop it. And you drop the mask in the presence of God who sees behind the mask anyway. You're going to tell God you're okay? He knows you're a mess. So we need to drop the mask in the presence of God and what's even scarier in the, uh, the shared privacy of sacramental confession. This is what becomes really scary. But the confession is, of course, to God. The priest is there kind of listening in in this moment of, of privacy, in a kind of shared privacy, which is a bit of an oxymoron, but it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the true thing. You're, you're technically talking to the priest, but he's actually only there as a witness. You are coming to open your heart towards God. The priest is there to listen, to witness, and to pray for you as an intercessor to bring the forgiveness of God. But the hardest thing to do is, as the people in the 12-step program say, make a fearless moral inventory of, of the mess that you have within and share it with another person. But there's nothing for it. If you're going to find healing, if you're going to find peace, if you're going to break the shell of pride that is keeping you a prisoner, you need to do that. Hard as it is, we need to let the mask fall and say, Lord, this is who I really am. Actually, you're probably a little worse than that, but that's okay. But as far as I can dig in, this is how I really am. There is the horror within to make this fearless moral inventory. C.S. Lewis did it when he was uh, 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 in his early 20s. He thought that he would try to, try to live a moral life. And he had never thought that he should live a moral life. He thought, well, that's for other people to do. But, you know, I'm, um, and he said that the first thing that he thought I would, make a, I would start to live a moral life and I will look with, with inside, and he said, and I was horrified at what I found. He, I said I found a bedlam of lusts. I found a, 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 a zoo of fondled, fondled, fondled hatreds. He said, my name was Legion. Okay, when you do a fake of fearless, fearless moral inventory, that's what you find. You look inside and you, you realize... My name is Legion. So that when we come before the chalice and we say, Lord, you came into the world to save sinners of whom I am first. That's not false modesty. That's saving honesty. So that's the thing that we need to do. We need to let the mask drop. And the third and last thing is that Christ will accept us just as we are. He didn't, didn't call her woman or, or man. Sometimes does that. It actually means sir or madam. It's, it's polite, but, but it's formal. Didn't call her that. <laughs> called her daughter. Accepted her, as it were, in affection and as family. And said, daughter, in the, the actual Greek, it says your faith has made you well. What it actually says is your faith has saved you in the, in, the, in the Greek. So your faith has saved you. Go in peace. She received the healing from the Lord. He did not smite her. He did not rebuke her. He did not say a word about her kind of iffy uh, plan there. He just said, God accepts you. Your faith has saved you. You can go healed. You can go in peace. And as the Lord starts to heal our hearts, we go in peace to share that peace with other people. The Divine Liturgy ends. Originally, it ended with the deacon dismissing the people and saying, go in peace. Uh, in other words, get out, that sort of stuff. Now the clergy say, let us depart in peace. But you don't miss the in peace part. The deacon could have said, you know, depart, you know, uh, you know, out, you know, clear the room, thank you very much. But no, it's not just about leaving, it's about leaving in peace. Having stood before God, having received cleansing, healing, and joy from the saving chalice, having been fed with our Lord's body and blood and receiving salvation, we are filled with the Lord's peace and we go to share that peace with the world. There's a story of three monks. I've shared this before, but since there are some visitors, I share the, share the story again. Three monks were debating what's the most important part of the divine liturgy. That's what monks do, I suppose. They have these spiritual debates and stuff like this. So one of them said, the most important part of the divine liturgy, Father, I think is 
at the reading of the gospel because in there we hear the words of Jesus Christ and they burn like fire into our hearts. And the, and the other monk said, yeah. you know, for me, I think the most important part of the divine liturgy is receiving Holy Communion because having been prepared by the words of the Lord, we receive the body and blood of Christ for our salvation, for the forgiveness of our sins, for the fullness of the Holy Spirit, for the fullness of the kingdom. That's what I think the most important part of the divine liturgy is. A little bit of a pause, and the third monk said, forgive me, dear brothers, but I think the most important part of the divine liturgy is the dismissal. When we are sent out by the church into the world, having heard the words of the Lord, having received the forgiveness through his body and blood, we go out into the world to share that peace with others. The, the truth of the matter is that we are not healed just so that we can be euphorious and, and uh, in a state of glorious contentment. That, that's nice too. But we are saved in order to serve. We are saved that we may go into the world and begin to bring that peace and let it spread to other people. <clears throat> Having experienced the transfiguration from Jesus Christ, we go to share that transfiguration with, with others. It's not about us. And everyone is born, every little baby, you're not born guilty or sinful. That's St. Augustine. God love me is kind of wrong about that. But you are born with the idea that says, it's all about me. I am the center of the universe. And, so, and the spiritual maturity consists of realizing, that it, with, 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 the, with the kind of divine horror, it's actually not all about me, it's about Jesus. And we go out into the world to share the peace of Jesus with those around us. God loved the whole world that he gave his only begotten son and we are to be a part of that world and to share his peace. When the Lord begins to heal us, he will say to us, son, daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and share that peace with the world for which I died. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.